So at this time, I'd like to bring Terry up to stage. Thank you very much, Angela. Today we're talking about success. I was chosen to be first today to help you get the ideas to take home for your event, for your organization, and bring success. I'm going to talk a lot about creating an innovative environment. My job, uh, about half of my life, was as either president or CEO of different companies. And then through those years, I've been able to learn ways that you and uh, be able to spread to you ideas uh, to make your organization or business more successful. You know, in creating an innovative environment, I grew up, people thought I was, I, I, they used the word ornery when I was younger, and then later it was, oh, that seems a little bit creative. But it took me a few years to realize that creativity doesn't make you any money. Innovation does, right? You may have the best idea, and I'll guarantee you that every one of you have a great idea. You have a great idea, but until you put it in action, you don't make any money. You have a dream you'd like to do, until you do it, it won't happen. Until you take the action. So we're going to talk a lot about the box. Uh, we're not going to talk much. We're going to tell you about the box. What do you say? You've got to think outside the box. Why is that? Because that's, that's exactly where the million dollar idea is, right? I want to thank Frank for giving me a chance to plug my book today. No, no. Daring to Dream, Daring to Act is the name of the book. And it's a two-step process to bring ideas to your organization. I have so much fun as a current CEO to be able to walk in and give you the behind the curtains of some of the thoughts that we have as CEOs of bringing new innovative ideas to your organization. In fact, step one, we'll talk about dreaming. That's where you get the ideas. Get you a quick hundred ideas when we get together. Talk about being nimble, embracing change, being able to change organizations. People react and, and uh, resist change, right? We'll tell you some ideas of ways to get around that in your organization. Group brainstorming, but here's the one I want you to put in your pocket today. I'll give you get a free tidbit today. And here's what it is. The word COT, you want to write down. So I need to write down a COT because you're going to remember this the rest of your life. COT is, is a pretty easy deal. How it came to me was uh, when I went to the lottery, I, I love ideas. So I'd say, hey, should we have the wall uh, green? Uh, how about this uh, ticket? Let's put, a, let's put a dog on this ticket. How about this? How about that? And after about a month, I noticed that the management team was about to melt down. So I called them all together. I said, what's going on? They said, we can't do everything that you're talking about. And I said, wait a minute, I, I really didn't mean do it. I meant, here's some ideas, ways to build upon those ideas. So we talked through how do we, how do we communicate that it's just an idea, and we came up with COT. And now here's how it works. Take this home and try this. Next time you do an email to someone, use one of these three in the CC. The first one is action required. As the CEO, that means you better do it. It means your job. I need it to happen right away. I do that maybe on 1% of the emails I send out today. The second is the one that we all use, FYI, for your information. What does that mean? That means, you know, think about it, read it. We'll probably talk about this at some point, but it doesn't mean that it takes immediate action. But the majority of my emails and those in my organization today use this one. COT, consider or throw away. That's right, consider or throw away. Now when you go back and use this and try this to see if you can create an innovative environment in your organization, a very simple step. Explain the rules to everyone when you send it, and here are the rules. If I send you something with COT, that means no response is wanted or required. Do not reply to me. I just wanted to give you the idea. If you're busy, you can simply delete it. And finally, send me your ideas. Now what we found was that all of a sudden we started exchanging ideas with no judgment. And more and more ideas came and more and more ideas were exchanged. It became much more innovative and much easier to discuss the new ideas. So that's the first step in daring to dream. You get the ideas. I'll work with you to get 100 brand new ideas for your organization. And then you need to dare to act. So daring to act, we'll talk about prioritizing ideas and then making a decision. One of the hardest things to do in business today. Finally, allowing authority, those that have the ideas, giving them the authority to be able to make your organization more successful, providing enough resources, that's pretty common, right? Money, time, and, and people. And finally, and I learned this from a, a millennial during one of my speeches, he, he said, I said how, how do you like the speech? He says, you know, Mr. Rich, it was great, you've been successful, you've done well. It just didn't seem real. Didn't you ever screw up? Didn't you ever, didn't you ever make a mess? Not do it? And I found, this came from my professor in college, it's better to have tried and failed than to succeed at doing nothing. Now in state government, you'd think succeed at doing nothing is a pretty common deal. But no, succeed at doing nothing is not what you want. It's better to have tried and failed than do nothing at all. In fact, 
The most famous female philosopher I know taught me this. Failure is the first step to success. Failure is the first step to success. Anybody know that famous philosopher, Brinley Dagstead? She's my granddaughter. <laughs> Here's why she taught me. She came over one day and uh, pulled herself up on the couch, and you know how it works? She took her first step. What happened? Boom! Right on her face. She failed. But you know what? She pulled herself back up. Took two steps. Next day, three steps. Next time back, she's running all over the house. Do you imagine if she had tried and failed and didn't do it again? Didn't try again? The moonshot. How many of you knew if you take a look at any uh, Google uh, the moonshot walking on the moon, you'll realize that 90% of the time the capsule was off course. Think about projects that you have within your organization that you set up, you organize, you have it all set, you got dates, and it doesn't, doesn't happen. They were off course 90% of the time. Could you imagine if they said, okay, fire away, we'll talk to you in three days when you get back, guys. They corrected 90% of the time. Failure is the first step to success. Here's one of my failures and one of my biggest successes, just like the moonshot. It's kind of my moonshot. Cooper, Iowa, a little town, 50 people northwest of here. A guy called me, he was a farmer, said, hey, you're from Cooper. Uh, we decided to have a centennial. We're trying to get a little publicity. We don't know whether we're 100 years old or not, but we want to party. Okay. He said, help us with publicity. So we got together and we started thinking, what could we do that would be fun? What, what are some ideas, the brainstorming that, we, that we'll discuss when we get together and during these uh, presentations? So he said, well, you're our most famous uh, celebrity because you've done TV and radio. I said, gosh, if I'm our, our most famous celebrity, we better adopt somebody. So we sat down, wrote a press release and said, hey, Cooper, I was looking for a 51st citizen just for one day, Centennial. We'd like to adopt you. Send it out to the Lawrence Welks of the world or whoever you know you think of that were big names at the time, all the old people like. Uh, we're going to give away a free oil and lube. That's all we had was one little garage in town. Free cemetery plot. We had four cemeteries. Heck, just we'll give away cemetery plot. We asked questions. You know the difference between an apple pie and a cow pie. Have you ever worn a pair of bib overalls? I sat down, made copies, and sent out 44 letters that afternoon at 4 o'clock. Cost me about 30 bucks. 44 letters. It's better to have tried and failed than to do nothing and succeed. 43 of the 44 failed. 43 of the 44 failed. But the next morning at 9 a.m., I got a call. Hi, this is Bruce Cannon with United Press International. We like the story. We're going to put it on the National Wire. Went on the National Wire 30 minutes to the second. I get a call. Hey, this is Jim McCauley. I'm a talent coordinator for Johnny Carson's Tonight Show. We like the idea. We're going to get together. We'd like to do something with it, but we need to be first. So you've got to guarantee that we're first on the air so the other reality shows don't take it. Um, okay. <laughs> I tried to pick up the phone to call my buddy. He said, hey. Hey, I couldn't get a dial to him. I hear this, this is Judy Steinberg, Good Morning America, we have two tickets, we want you in New York tomorrow morning. Sorry, we just committed to The Tonight Show. Well, needless to say, when that hit the press, we had people from all over the country uh, call us, want to be the 51st citizen. Carson Show actually called back and talked about doing a satellite uplink with a split screen. A satellite uplink with a split screen. July 11th, that year, in the town of 50, we had 15,000 people show up to the little town of Cooper, Iowa, Centennial, along with ABC, CBS, NBC, and CBS. We failed 43 of the 44 times, and if we'd only sent out one letter, none of this would have happened. That shot my career up. Everything went well. But I kept thinking. Remember the ideas? Back to the ideas and how we talk, when we, we talk about brainstorming, of writing down all the ideas, which you should do today. If you hear something good, you hear a speaker good today, you want to write it down. And get, take those ideas home with you because you'll bring those back for more success within your organization. Well, I heard satellite uplink. When I heard satellite uplink, I started thinking, you know, I could take that back to my company after we did the big Tonight Show and got to have the big break. That satellite uplink might work in our corporation to be able to uplink HBO to all of our cable systems, put it on basic cable. And so it had never been done. There had never been a satellite uplink in Iowa. We went ahead, on the right is a satellite uplink, on the left is a satellite downlink, and uh, in one weekend, our little company sold $15 million in HBO. Now that happened because I failed 43 of the 44 times. From there, I took this satellite uplink, and we were able to do live shows then from HBO to Stars, Disney Channel, Cox Communications, became a heck of a business. We'll talk through some of those failures and successes by not being afraid to try something. The other one, which was kind of fun, I, I also ran the zoo for a while. A lot of new ideas. We took it from a $600,000 deficit, cash flowed at $12, $14 million in endowment. 
It's all said and done. But I got a call from the Botanical Center. They said, give us some ideas. So this is some fun things that you get to do when you do creativity and uh, brainstorming. So they asked to do some ideas, but I didn't realize that one of the people were the pe person who writes the editorial, not on the left side, the big piece of paper. Next morning was Sunday morning, and I was giving ideas, and here's what came out. Botanical Center, think big, save the Botanical Center. What does a big thinker recommend? Grow a marijuana display. <laughs> Acquire the world's biggest Venus flytrap, big enough to suck down a cow. <laughs> and finally, maybe uh, add a center for breast cancer patients, he said, because the gardens are therapeutic and the dome does look like a breast. <laughs> Needless to say, my wife, for the first time in my life, says, you really didn't say that. But what's cool is the leaders who had never really tried something new decided you know what, if he can get away with that, we will too. And if you get a chance, you want to go down to the Botanical Center, brand new, huge cultural attraction for the state of Iowa, all because we took the chance. Big or small, there's a unique, unique way of doing something better. And that's what I want to come to your organization, to your uh, event, and help you to create the new ideas, big or small. I don't want to retire thinking what if. I don't know about you, but I do not want to retire thinking what should I have done, what could I have done. You want to be able to dare to dream and dare to act. I would love to come to your organization or your event, help you in talking about creating an innovative environment as a current CEO and enjoy the dare to dream, talking about dare to dream and dare to act for your organization your, and your folks. Thank you so much. Get a hold of Angela. This is a great event. You're going to have so much fun today. I'll tell you, the lineup is unbelievable. It's my job to kick it off, put it all together, and I'm going to turn it back over, and we will continue. Come on up, Scott.